missionary every day. Tell the world that Jesus is the way, be it in the town or country or the busy avenue. Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. Be a missionary every day. Welcome to our Missionary Stories. We're so thankful that you tuned in. I know you're excited over these lessons, Adventure in Brazil, about this little 11-year-old boy that hated to go to school because his friends only went to school up to the fourth grade, and he did not like school. But he had had great adventures with him and his father, and we're going to learn about them today, and we're going to learn how much more we as believers need to pray for our missionaries and all of the difficulties they have in winning them to Christ, people that have never heard the truth, but are worshiping demonic spirits and worshiping idols. And we know that they need to know the truth about Christ. So we're going to talk about that today, and we're going to learn from the book of John, my favorite book. I would like for all of you that's listening to read the book of John through twice. If you read the book of John through twice, you will never doubt your salvation. But just in the first chapter, we're going to learn that he is eternal. First John, John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So since Jesus Christ is the living Word, we see this in verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So we see in the beginning was Jesus. And Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. He's the only true and living God in the world. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and they are three in one. And then we see the same was in the beginning with God, so he is eternal. Jesus Christ is eternal. God is eternal. The Holy Spirit is eternal. They were in the beginning. All things were made by him, and without him there was nothing made that was made. So the Word shows us the wonderful creation that we see in this lesson right here is that he's the creator. This is the Word shows us that he is the creator. All things were made by him, and without him, nothing was anything made that was made. And him was life. So we see he's the creator of all things. He is eternal, and he is life. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. He is the light of the world. Think of all these things that you learn in just these five verses. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. Now John the Apostle is writing the book of John, and we're talking now in verse 6 and 7 about John the Baptist. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. You see, that's why you need to study the book of John, because you can find believe in this book about 100 times. He was not that light, John the Baptist was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. You see, that's why we as believers are the only true Christians. And you can say you're a Christian, but you're going to find out in these lessons these next two, week, two weeks, and unless you're born again, you cannot say you're a Christian because a Christian is Christ-like in everything he does. That's, they're only mentioned three times in the Bible, Christians are. So they acted like Christians in Antioch. That's why they said that they were Christians. They called the disciples Christians. 
And then he, Paul, when he was giving out the message to King Agrippa, he said, almost thou persuadest me to become a Christian. But you see, it isn't almost. The only way you can be born again is through the Holy Spirit. And it is divine conception. And this is the divine word. And then the next time that the Christian is mentioned is in Peter. He says, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. So there, if you are not a child of God, you can't, born again by the Spirit of God, you cannot say you are a Christian. And this, in verse 9, that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. You see, now, since we are children of God, we are the light of the world. And we, he says, that we do not walk in darkness. We are children of light. And verse 10, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Think of all the things we learn about Christ in this first book. And just, we haven't even finished. There's, think about all of the things in this. There are 51 chapters, I mean, 51 verses, and there's 21 chapters in the book of John. So think of all that you learn about Christ. That is the answer. He's our security. He's our protection. Everything we have comes from him. And he's the only true and living God. So let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, once again, we thank Thee that we can call Thee Father. We know that our desire is for every true believer that Thy life will be lived through each of us. Thy life that is holy. Be ye holy as I am holy, Thy Word says. We desire Thy perfect will. We also thank Thee that thy word says, delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. That is one hundred fold. And that every person that's listening will be edified and built up. And that every person that is listening will come to know thee as personal Savior, brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto thee. Teach us through these missionary stories how much we need to love those that have never heard the truth and to pray for our missionaries. We pray today for missionaries all over the world that thou will meet the spiritual, financial, physical, and emotional needs of each one. Thank thee for their service for thee. Thank thee for allowing us to serve thee. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So we have seen in these lessons the awfulness of knowing that these people worshipped idols. They worshipped the evil, the demonic spirits. This is the saddest thing in the world to think that people do not know the true and living God and would bow down to another God because God's word tells them in his word that he says, you turned to God from idols to serve the true and living God. 1 Thessalonians 1 9. And we have on the board, I am the first and I am the last. And beside me, there is no God. And then we also have these lessons that every person needs to know. And we're seeing this today in the last days in which we're living. We're seeing the many, many different religions different organizations, the false teachings that we see in the world today. And God's word says in Exodus 20, that is Exodus 20 is where we find the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. So this is what we're seeing with the people today. They are making idols. Not only are they making idols, but we can see today that people are worshiping man. People are worshiping 
man. And we know that God's word teaches us the first two commandments we're seeing today. And in Exodus chapter 20, listen what it says. And we need to understand this because it says that we are not to have an idol. Verse 5, listen what verse 5 says. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon their children unto the third and fourth generation. Now, this is for all of you out there that's worshiping any other God besides the true and living God. And when we get finished with these lessons the next two weeks, you're going to find out how these people realized that there was only one true God. And this is what we are teaching in these lessons because these people have learned the awfulness of even having gods that they believed in the God of the waters. And then they lightened the candles and we're going to find out what happened to these people. So we, we saw also how Carl uh, was, he met Carl at a meeting and little Carl come to know Christ as Savior. And they went to see his father and his father also received Christ as Savior. His family had been a missionary to China and he came to the meeting and we saw how he knew that he was rebelling against his parents. All of these years, how many of you out there are rebelling against your parents? You see, if you're rebelling against your parents, you're rebelling against God. So you must turn to the Lord. And that evening, Carl's father went up and found the old Bible of his mother and his father, and he read from the Bible in their home, the very first time he had ever seen his father read the Bible. The very first time. What about you fathers out there? Visiting the iniquity of the fathers until the third and fourth generation. But listen what God says about those that are righteous and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. You see, that's where God's word says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. So we see what's happening today. Well, now after this adventure and they had been to all of these things Roger had with his father. So Karen came, saw them sitting in the room planning what adventure they were going to do today. And she yells in, I wish I was a boy. Her father said, what? She said, I wish I was a boy. And he said, why? He said, because you and Roger are always doing things and we don't get to go with you. And Roger said, there are many things that we do that you girls are not allowed to do. But her father said, but today we're all going to go. We're going to have a great adventure today. Now, I want all of you that's listening to think about the life that these missionaries live. This is true. These stories are true that we tell you. This has happened to these people. So he told them before they left to get their little flannel board, like you see my flannel board, but they have a small one that they would take with them. And he said, get your wordless book and take the wordless book because we're going to go to one of the poorest areas in Brazil. But you must wear your boots because if you don't wear your boots, the worms will lay eggs under your toenails. And he didn't have any argument about the children putting on their boots. He said, because you remember what happened to me. I had to have my toenail taken off. We do not even think of what that's like. So we must pray for our missionaries. We can reach global from our homes. We can reach missionaries all over by just praying for them. So we, they started out and they saw all of these people on the bus. 
and they, the buses were so crowded, they were just hanging on the outside. And then they saw this man carrying hammocks. He makes them and sells them. So they came to the very first place. It was under a bridge. And they see this lady, and she has cardboard boxes put up, and that's where she lives. Then they saw another place that did not... how homeless people live almost every place. She was cooking in just cans. She had no pots and pans, but yet she was sweeping the place where she was. And Roger said, Father, where'd these people come from? He said they came from northern Brazil because there was a famine there to find a better place. But he said, this is not much better than where they left. I want all of you that's listening today, I want you to thank God that you have a bed to sleep in. Thank God for your parents. Your parents may not even raise you. You may be adopted. You may have an aunt that cares for you. But you know, if you are adopted, Jesus Christ had an adopted father. That was Joseph. Because God was his, is his father. You see, whomever is caring for you are the ones that you're to love and respect and obey. Love them and thank them for loving you. The greatest gift that any parent can give is love. That's the greatest gift. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, you cannot even love your children. You cannot love your husband or wife because perfect love comes from him. He is love. Christ is love. So then he told the children, he said, you girls take your flannel board and go over there and give out the word to those children. And he said, your mother and I will go back under the bridge and talk to those women that we saw. And he said, Roger, you go and talk to those two young boys over there. So Roger went over, and when he started telling them about Jesus Christ, he told them that Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins. He was telling them about how he was beaten, how a crown of thorns was put on his head, how he was put on a cross, and the nail prints went into his hands. And they mocked him, and they were laughing at him. But he continued to tell the story. He was telling the story about the wordless book. And then when he didn't stop telling the story, they began to listen. You see, the wordless book is one of the most important books that any person can know because we've told it to you so many times. You can take this little wordless book, this little wordless book that's free that these women make. They used to be made of paper. And the Dark page stands for sin. Everybody is a sinner. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood, stands for the blood that Christ shed for us. And the white page stands for the righteousness of Christ. Or I can say, uh, he says in his word, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. And then the gold page stands for heaven. And the green page, we're to grow. So we, we can just understand what these colors are because God's word says that they love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Write these verses down, memorize them. And if you want these little books, write to our number. We'll give you the books. And then we see the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, stands for the blood that he shed for us. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. All means all, and that's all, all means. 1 John 1, 7. And then, of course, we have the white page. 
Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow, Psalm 51, 7. You see, you're not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. With the precious blood of Christ. Those of you that need to know this Bible verse is 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. We must be redeemed by the blood. So we have also the green page, which means grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what the green page stands for. And of course, the gold page speaks of heaven. And we're going to talk about that a little later in this lesson because we're going to find out a testimony about a man and how he was searching for the truth and could not find it. So after he was finished with his wordless book with these little boys, he tore the paper wordless book and gave them a part. He gave each one one that they could tell others. So they started off again, and their father stopped to talk to an 11-year-old policeman. He wanted to know about Christ also and how to get to heaven. And he said to Roger, Roger, this little boy probably can't read because he's never been to school. And Roger hated school. You remember, he's trying to figure out what he can do to serve the Lord where he doesn't have to go to school. So they stopped at another place, and this was the saddest place. Karen, the oldest girl, cried. She couldn't stand to look at these homes and the little children and how very poor they were and how hungry they were. I want you to think about this when we sit down to eat of all the people all over the world that have no food. Little children dying without Christ. We can mention many places right now where children need the Word of God. They need food. Let's pray that somehow, some way, we that are Christians will be able to reach them. So after this, the whole family was going, and they said, now we're going to go to Senor Pablo. And he is going to give us his testimony of how he was saved. And when they got there, they couldn't even get in the house. They were standing outside looking in the windows because everybody loved him. And they finally made a way for Roger's mother to get in and find a seat. He looked at the small stove. He looked at the small kitchen cabinet. And he saw six women sitting on a bed with each had a child. And they were all piled in to this house. And this man was telling them what happened to him. And he said, most of you children are in the same condition that I was in. My father died before I was born, and my mother died soon afterwards. And I was left to live on the streets. And many of you know what this is because you're living on the streets. And he said, I would steal food or I would eat out of the garbage cans. And he said, I pr may promise myself that someday I was going to be rich. And he said, I never got caught for stealing, but when the policeman would come and try to catch me, that I would lie and say that I didn't do anything. So they actually never did catch me stealing because I told so many lies. And then he said, when I got older, this came to pass, I was rich. I smuggled things into Brazil without coming in the way that the law required. I smuggled in liquor. I smug smuggled in cigarettes. I smug smuggled in nylons. I smuggled in cars. And he said, it didn't take me long to get rich. So he said, I was happy. Do you think I was happy? They said, no, no. 
He said, no, I wasn't. I had a fine car, I had a fine home, and I was rich, but I was not happy. And then he said, I got leprosy, and they all just started to go back. They shrank back, they were scared. He said, don't be afraid, it is arrested. He said, that's the reason I'm here. He said, you can see the scars on my face and on my hands. I tried to keep it hid from people for a long time, but then I couldn't, so I lost all my friends and I started drinking. I was drunk almost all the time because I was terrified that I had leprosy and that I was going to die. And I was afraid of death. So he said, I was drunk most of the time. And he said, you know, I love music. So one day I was on the street and this man came and he was singing the most beautiful songs. And then some man preached, and I'm sure he preached about how to get to heaven, but I was too drunk to remember. But I tried to listen, but I just couldn't. And then he said, after this, I decided that I would quit drinking, I would quit smuggling things into the country, and I would join, I would become a Protestant. I went to a Protestant church, and he said, do you know, I was not happy because I tried to do everything and tried to be good, but I couldn't. And what did I need, boys and girls? One little boy looked up and he said, you needed to be born again. That church did not teach salvation. Now this is a Protestant church, and let me tell you, the Protest Protestant isn't even in this Bible. So if you're going to a church, Protestant or Catholic, and you're not hearing the word of, you're not hearing the truth that Christ is the only way to heaven, then you're at the wrong place. So this is what happened to him. So he never found out salvation. So he thought, I will do something else. I will begin to teach boys and girls. So he began to get all the kids on the streets and tell them a Bible lesson and told them to be good. And he said, the you boys and girls, you laughed at me. You didn't do anything I told you to do. He said, you made fun of me behind my back. And you only came to listen to the Bible lessons because I gave you candy. But he said, I was still unhappy. I was in a church and I was trying to do good, but I wasn't getting what I needed. And when you tune in next week, you're going to find out what happened to this young man. If you have not been born again, you are not a child of God. Tell the world that Jesus is the way, be it in the town or country or the busy avenue, Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. Be a missionary every day. Jesus is the way, the Lord is soon returning, there is no time for losing, so be a missionary, God's own emissary, be a missionary.